Just getting better and better and better. <laughs> oh yeah. Can't wait to jump in those mountains. Set up my tent. Mm-hmm. scare him away. <clears throat> oh. Still here. I didn't leave. I haven't left yet. Tomorrow morning I'll go. It's funny, just when you think you're ready to go do something, more comes up. Anyway, early in the morning still, I'm kind of waking up. And I have an email from a person, a lady. Um, First Nations indigenous, indigenous lady from North America, from the United States, I believe. And uh, there's a more than a handful of informative quite long emails from this person. Probably why I haven't uh, shared. I'm pretty sure I shared some. I don't know. I'm going to have to Google this person's and Google it. Email search this person. Find all the emails and get them together. So um, I came across this morning. I read through a little bit and this sounds quite informative. And this is a very long email. But I'm going to go for it. And then... Uh, We'll see, maybe I will possibly put, find how many emails are from this person and put them on the website possibly after this, we'll see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, last night, side note, last night we were 
um, surfing through some YouTube videos on the TV. We don't have cable or watch regular television. And we were watching a show, a quick report from Redacted. Um, there's a couple who report on, quote, the stories the mainstream media won't report on, end quote. Another funny thing about that channel, they have a lot of people email me and tell me my intro's too long. It's too long. Because they don't know about fast forward. But anyway, this couple, their intro is 30 minutes long. 30 minutes. But you know what? I've never felt compelled to email them and complain about it. Maybe I'm kind of weird, but anyways. Sorry I'm babbling. It's my first few moments being awake. The coffee hasn't really kicked in yet. But anyways, they were doing an in-depth report on the possible close to a million people amassed at the south of the U.S. border right now. And Sarah's normally doesn't, she's not into that shit, but even she was glued to the TV. We're watching this and it's just amazing to me. <clears throat> and we're watching and Sarah's had a million questions like, what the hell's going on? I'm like, I don't know. It is alarming. It's really weird to watch. And, um, I'm watching the crowd. I'm just going by common sense, taking, taking the details and seeing what I notice. And, uh, the majority of the people in that line were able-bodied males. And, the majority, I'd say 100% of those people looked uh, very nourished. <laughs> they weren't, they didn't look hungry at all to me or uh, dressed in rags. They looked very fit on average, very healthy, clean clothes. And it just makes my brain wonder, how do you do that? How do you amass close to a million people and, and get ready to surge across the border? But the most alarming part, I think, is is how does any country, it doesn't matter what country it is, how does any country actually open up the floodgates to that? That is crazy, isn't it? It's very, very alarming. And there's obviously something going on behind the scenes. You just don't do that. Nobody does that. Nobody allows that. It doesn't happen. And from what I understand, it is a very effective method of destabilizing a country which then makes you think, well, why are the so-called leaders of that particular country allowing their country to be destabilized? It's very, very alarming to watch, and you wonder if it is just the head ready to explode, right, of the infection. And it's, uh, it's just, like, look at me and Sarah and I were saying last night, this is a crazy, it's like watching a crazy movie. This is like watching a freaking crazy movie and not having a clue how it's going to end or what's coming next. Like, seriously, what's coming next? <laughs> this, the, the shit show going on the past, what, three years? Maybe possibly, well, three years, has been incredible to watch. If you can think for yourself and see through the BS, it's incredible to watch. Very, very incredible to watch. You have had a, a handful of people have said, well, they've lopped off the head off, they've lopped the head off the snake. And the White Hats, the good guys are doing this and doing that. I don't know, I haven't a clue if I could, I don't... Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I would not know how to comment on that. But if that were the case, then I guess maybe supposedly the people who are panicking are trying to create as much carnage directly but indirectly as they can. That might maybe make sense. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, I feel for my neighbors. I feel for everybody. I mean, our country is a mess. Yeah, we had a Hillary the Killer Clinton as actually was invited to Canada to sit our so-called leader, corrupt leader, supports and associates with Hillary Clinton. That about, that about tells you everything you need to know right there, right? So I guess we all need help in the end, right? Pray for our countries. Pray for our countries. But the states, I gotta get a hold of some of my close friends in the southern U.S. to see what's up, what's going on, man. How's this affecting you? It is very alarming to watch. Very, very. It also, at the same time, it almost makes you wonder how, how even my, my YouTube channel, how all of us, makes you wonder how all of us can actually have this much attention to these topics that we talk about when, when the things that are going on the planet are going on. It's crazy. Now, before I get going on any side topics too much, I suggest we should probably get into this email. Let's listen to this. This is titled Sasquatch Assessments. Hi Steve. 
I'll skip the usual greetings to you and get right to the meat of the matter today. Time, energy, and resources of, is the essence here. This is the most efficient way of doing this for me, so please forgive me for dispensing of the niceties in this situation we find ourselves in. In the U.S. right now, those of us online on a certain platform as well as others have done our level best to wake everyone up to the truth. We've discovered that in doing so, we were able to wake up as many as we could, and that's enough energy and time expended on that. We'll continue to wake people up, but we've also moved on to discussing things who are ready to listen, such as fellow experiencers. Now, this can be said for any subject matter across the board, <clears throat> excuse me, whether it be Sasquatch or other cryptids, wild dangerous animals, corrupt politicians, etc. You stated very emphatically in the one video I watched recently that it is everyone's job to alert the public with small children to great dangers in the vicinity. How can we live with ourselves if we don't tell people and they get hurt, abducted, or killed? Some people will watch a dangerous predator in the area and not say one thing to anyone else living in that area about it. Oh, believe me, I've heard it all when it comes to such things about how they justify their beliefs or downright laziness. But we're talking to those in all areas after a while who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Just as it says in the Bible, right? Right. I used to be in groups on Facebook for Sasquatch ranging from the very controlled, which I could equate with a despot regime, all the way to the heavily scientific ones. The first ones are not much use in getting anywhere to helping ease the suffering of experiencers to learning what we really all ought to be centered on when it comes to this subject matter. The Sasquatch at some point have become dangerous. Same as there are dangerous humans, for instance. Sorry, but I dispense of the emails regarding, I think I saw one. I never saw one, but I think I smelled one, but I'm not sure. Where they're either brand new to the subject, and sure it freaks them out, but they're not in, they're not in it, like others of us are. Unless their experience has to lead to even more, and they're in a situation where it might be dangerous and kids are involved. I'd have to say, you need to take a pass. That none of the emails you receive are in any order of importance, and you tell everyone that all the emails are important no matter how small the problems with Sasquatch appear to be. I agree that everyone deserves to be heard and helped, but there are bigger fish here to fry, and I believe you are sensing that now. We've got a huge problem on our hands as human beings. By now, you had to have realized that this is bigger than when you first began doing these videos. The reports which seem to interest you most are those where there's military and government interaction. Not only are those the most trustworthy, but they speak to explain to us what these Sasquatch are about. Most humans will go on to a military base to poke around where it's being protected by armed soldiers, even if they're just doing rounds to keep an eye on an unused portion of the base. These Sasquatch really don't care about any boundaries. But they are especially interested for some reason in prisons, military bases, nuclear installations, power plants, graveyards, schools, camps, where there are a lot of people having fun and making noise. Noises seem to be of great interest to them. They're very quiet themselves, so anything which makes a great deal of noise piques their interest. These are not only a dangerous life form, but potentially there will be greater interaction between they and humans to the loss of human life. They behave as if they're a wild Indian tribe or animals taking what they want. This was the situation between early invaders slash settlers versus Native American Indians. Natives had certain things they all agreed upon from tribe to tribe and didn't cross certain lines. Stealing wasn't a bad thing to them and if one could do it without the guards catching them it brought that tribe great honor from the one who was robbed. It was a show of great strength and was respected, but even in that there was a line that you did not pass when it came to other tribes. Taking the wrong child, woman, boy, or adult, and not only was that tribe coming for you, tribes friendly to them would sometimes be brought in to deal with this. Settlers had no tribe, and they were easy pickings. The Sasquatch viewed the humans that way. Do you see? 
There are peop they are people, <clears throat> but there is so much more than that. We have here the same situation that occurred between early settlers and Native American Indians. Native American Indians had to contend with the Sasquatch to the point where they had to chase them off, kill them, and be extremely firm about not letting them anywhere near their tribes. That in itself is a significant piece of information. Most, if not all, of the tribes now will have nothing to do with the Sasquatch. Some used to trade with them, and so, and so there became an uneasy alliance, alliance of sorts. The Sasquatch, as far as I can see, never aligned themselves with any tribes to give support to one tribe over another. Tribes make allies just as a matter of survival. Sasquatch don't form such alliances with humans, period. What Sasquatch do more than anything is form relationships slash friendships with human children, or perhaps one to a few human adults in certain families, but they certainly haven't shown that they want anything more than that unless someone out there knows they do and aren't sharing that with all of us. They have little to no respect of our laws unless firearms are involved and even then they don't vacate the area completely but they do a lot of spying on us. If you look at all of the reports, if you have the ability to do that in your own mind you'll find that I've told you so far about them is true. They keep themselves separate from humans and won't barter anymore for the most part, or share, or give us our own personal space or respect, because they take what they want. They do calculate what it will cost them, but sure, it's clear from the missing people in the 411 cases that it's no known predator, including humans who are doing this. It's something else that highly trained dogs won't have anything to do with. I've seen how military dogs are trained, and when dogs like that won't deal with them and cower, that's significant. When a combat slash military dog won't go there, you know it's bad. These dogs are real heroes, putting their lives, not only at risk, but giving their lives to protect their humans. But they won't protect their humans from a Sasquatch. They run, and they're damaged for the rest of their lives. I have a friend in Alabama who's got them on her property, out in the countryside, where there are not many houses at all, and they're far apart, and even in sight, not even in sight of one another. She had two registered German Shepherds, and the Sasquatch messed up one of them so badly he had to be put down. That dog protected his master so fiercely that he did go well above and beyond the call of duty, so to speak. They hurt that dog, but not in the way you might think. They did something to the dog's mind. I've seen my own dog and what one of them did to him. They really messed up his mind so that he hid in his dog box and wouldn't come out to eat, wouldn't alert, or anything in the area, to anything in the area, even wild rabbits. After that, and he began to get in bad health. Dad said's enough enough, and he went, and the rest of the family set about slaughtering all our chickens in order to stop the damage to our family and my dog, but that did not stop them. They were quite interested in us kids. I remember one of the first times my brother Rick spotted one after dark out in our big yard and how shocked he was. This one wasn't the one I was used to dealing with a few years prior, which my mind hid from me. The terif they terrified me, but my young mind could not deal with that, and as if the case with human children, we were both groomed by them and also terrified by them. Our families who do see them can't do much to make it stop. When they can invade your home and take children, you do things as an adult to do your best for the child. But when all that fails, and there's no help, what do you do? You can only keep doing the best that you can do, and that's all. We weren't given a lot of information as children to deal with these Sasquatch, and surely we didn't believe the little we were told. I have to stress this part of it, and address it now. Given the risk these Sasquatch pose, not only to children in general, but the fact that you've got a young daughter yourself that appears that you know one or more of them have been on your current property. Since you told us that you got a great number of chickens, we've seen you get a dog, you've got goats now, and you're right on the edge of the forest. I've been having flashbacks, which have so disturbed my sleep and rest that it's taken me some time to sort through everything in order to just speak about all this with you personally. It would help for the public to be aware of the situation as it really is, and not for them to presume 
These Sasquatch are only ever usually in the forest far from humans. Nothing could be further from the truth. Not only could they be right next to you and you not know it. I would explain them being right next to my brothers and I and yes, we all felt it there each time. We grew up in the woods in wild areas. We're trained heavily in how to react to our surroundings. There are indicators which tell you when there's something there. They were there and there was no doubt about it for any of us. We knew not to take off running and do an every person for themselves thing. We knew we had to protect each other and as scared as all of us were, we did not split up. We stuck together all the way back to our house or our aunt and uncle's house. Once there, we told dad what happened to see what he wanted to do about it. Of course, the one that happened of course, the one that happened near to our aunt and uncle's place was particularly troubling because they were elderly with one or two shotguns, but our uncle never kept them in good working condition. Neither did he carry them outside as they were too much of a bother. Even after that, the three of them, our aunt, uncle, and cousin, saw them near the property out in the middle of nowhere. They didn't take proper precautions against being hurt. I remember very well how my cousin often confided in me only to try and work out how she might protect herself and her parents. I had five siblings and I was next to the youngest in our family and we visited the house nearly every weekend but she confided in me. She said she felt she could trust me to keep it from the others and that I somehow had the ability to reason things through when the others blew things off. She didn't tell me fully what they were dealing with until one day and then I realized this was a very, very, very dangerous thing for them. She was worried how her parents were responding to this when they kept going to this fishing hole near their home to get fish to eat. My cousin was afraid because they had to rely on their garden, fruit trees, any fish they could get, and deer my cousin could harvest to survive. But she said she would rather be hungry than lose her parents or her own life to this thing. She was very afraid to describe this thing until one day she couldn't take it anymore. It appeared that when we were there, it didn't appear to want to mess with them much. But looking back, I can see where it or they even became used to us being around. Dad was told by them that someone was messing in their garden, taking vegetables, and just messing others up badly, and leaving them. It wasn't the usual wildlife, and they said we had to come down and see the footprints in the garden to try and understand what it was they were dealing with. They were pretty scared. The size and depth of the prints meant some human wasn't doing this. But what then? Dad had a frame of reference, though he did bring me down there to show me the prints, no doubt, hoping I'd remember what did that sort of thing. They'd been found in our own garden over an hour away from there, and I remembered that. Their prints could be seen, and then they'd vanish, and there's no way something that heavy and big could just leap out of the garden with so, with so much mushy clay to it without leaving prints of some sort. There's no way. All I got from seeing them was a headache from hell which caused me to pass out. When I woke up, their take on it was usual. They thought I was not well, but they also knew I had these spells at times, yet nothing we were looking at should have caused me to do that. What did cause it was that I began to have flashbacks which terrified me. My mind could not handle them, and I passed out. Coal just dropped. I puked while heading to the ground at times, depending on what I was seeing or what was causing me to be in distress. But at that age when their garden was but at that age when their garden and ours was being invaded, we could not figure it out. We all had dogs next to our gardens, yet none of those dogs alerted to anything or anyone during the night. In fact, the dogs were messed up in the head and would not come out of their dog boxes. It might be a good good to note. It might be good to note what they were after in the gardens. Tomatoes, sweet corn, some pumpkins, I grow one a year, dark ones, apples, plums, peaches, cherries, carrots, beets, and those were the main ones from both our gardens where the prints were found. My experience doing home inspection photography for over 10 years in the countryside in Ohio has allowed me to get a broader perspective on, Sasquatch, on this Sasquatch problem than others. I wasn't collecting reports but clearly some of these properties were not conducive to anyone living there, no matter how nice the places were. Everything in the very air at some of them was telling us to get out. 
my husband, he usually doesn't pay a lot of attention during inspections, came to me and said he kept wanting to just run from certain houses once there and doing his job and how unreasonable and overwhelming that feeling was. He came to me to see if I was encountering the same thing and I was. I kept it hidden from him since sometimes he just blown it off and said I was afraid for nothing. But when it deeply affected him, he had to have a second opinion, so to speak, to tell him what was going on with me. Then we began to keep an eye on the seller and buyers, as well as realtors, without telling them anything. Sure, we noticed how they kept looking around like they were really paranoid. In those days, we were not about Sasquatch at all, and frankly, in our work, only a few times did the seller talk at all about a huge man with a lot of long hair. That's about all he'd say. Well, that's about all they'd say. The creep factor when returning to those places was off the chart. It gave us the willies big time. The longer we stayed, the worse it got. I recall that in those houses, whatever it was, it was inside the house as well, but as far as my experience reached, which was quite a distance, there wasn't anything I was used to dealing with. be a jet flying overhead. Almost sounds like a fighter jet. It was always like, get out and get out right now. It was insistent, insistent and brutish. When homeowners and their children behave in such a way, they appear to have been abused by not, not by other family members, neighbors or anything else, and they won't talk about it. You have to glean what you might from what you see in their houses. My husband had done undercover work for the feds, so I watched as he checked these places out. These people weren't settled for the time they said they spent there. Whatever was bothering them all, it had been there the whole time. When the buyers said they were taking the house, oh my gosh, the huge size these sellers let out. It showed a level of desperation to get out of that house that was beyond what the buyers could see. When we had to inspect said houses again after a short time and the sellers had that same look on their faces and acting paranoid as heck, we knew that, we knew that certain of these houses had something else going on with them. Yet our minds, for the most part, did not get on the subject of Sasquatch. We would both experienced what people would call human hauntings in our life, but this was not that. It was intense and like someone drilling into your skull to get out all the time. Whatever this was, it wasn't there when the house was being built or first occupied. We struggled ourselves to come to grips with my, what might cause this. Was it something to do with the land? It struck me that the houses were built on land, on land which felt claimed, like a trail that was used for generations by animals. It had a big house planted on it. But no, it wasn't anything to do with animal pathways at all. How to explain it to you and your viewers so you will know how to be safe? It's difficult to tell any of you what this is like personally. We had a lot of experience inspecting homes and businesses in all types of settings in the countryside and cities, but this is an aspect of the Sasquatch, such as they lay claim to certain land, and if you violate it, they unleash holy hell on you your loved ones, your animals, and on frequent visitors to your home and property. It's an energy, or energies. Many times much more than just one of them, which feeds on the energy of the humans in that structure. It feeds on humans' physical energy. It clouds humans' minds. It's an energy which sets humans against one another to drive them out. But they come into homes and businesses. These Sasquatch are not animals, and they're not just people either, Steve. Native American Indians know better than to trade with them or communicate with them if they know what's good for them. Once they're in your life, and you communicate with them, they feel like they can take what they want from you or those you love. They claim you into their tribe, so to speak, and you don't have a clue they've done it. In our valley, I can look back now and see that they claimed all the families in our valley as if they were all under their control. They even claim the bad boy's prison up the road and everyone in it as well, including the guards who are usually very unnerved by seeing them up there and not being able to do a thing to them for trespassing. What's trespassing to a giant hairy human who takes what he wants? 
nothing. To open communications with them is to invite them to rule over your life and hurt you if they don't get what they want from you. Nope. Um, I hope I'm making myself clear to everyone here. The more someone visits their places of habitation in the woods, for instance, the more they will treat such people as if they are members of their tribe because you're on their land. You've enmeshed yourselves in their lives even when you can't see them. We expect wild animals to take a hint and steer clear of human habitation, and when they don't, we tend to take appropriate action towards them. Most come in to get... Most come in to get the garden, cats, animal feed, farm animals, and if they show they are not sufficiently scared of doing that, we have no choice but to deal with them. When it's a more dangerous animal, we track them down and dispatch them if they won't be hazed out, or the Division of Natural Resources of the Forest Service won't, let, won't relocate them. But we're talking about giants here, not bears or cougars. We're talking about a being who can't be caught or relocated and the rangers are scared to death of them. The turnover rate of rangers quitting their job when they're stationed in the more remote wild areas is huge. And you'd think it was from trauma from bears or not being able to handle the solitude or something, but no, it's not. It's from things they won't talk about, and the Forest Service is perplexed as to what's causing these individuals who can't deal with anything in the remote wood to just up and quit, never to work such a job again. I mentioned this after my husband said he had looked into doing that job and we watched a program about it on TV. It was sort of a documentary to try to get young men and women to do that job for the Forest Service. I presume they even had a clue. I'm so, I presume if they even had a clue to what they were divulging to the public which could trace back to Sasquatch, they would never let that into their show. The rangers talking about this kept wanting to divulge more and seemed scared but not of the Forest Service or government. No, they were afraid of, of ridicule, mockery, or derision from the public. They also had to know that if they talked, the people paying for that to be made wouldn't allow it to get into the show. But we could tell that they were really wrestling with information, in, sorry, with informing new ranger recruits from walking into a horrific situation in which they could see and sorry, in which they could lose their lives. So they began talking about bear attacks and how to avoid them and what to do if they got attacked. If a new ranger could handle something like that, then they were well enough informed of the Sasquatch. I know this now, but only in hindsight. I've had countless experiences with being trained how to investigate such things from dad training me to do it from the time I was very young. He told me one day that it would be vitally important for me to tell everyone that I could what I know about these Sasquatch. He also said that I had a lot more to do with them than I could remember at that time, and that experience could save lives. But yes, we were talking to forest rangers quite a lot and traveling to where things were happening on state and national property. Officially, the government both did and didn't know we were there doing this with Dad's crew. Unofficially, it was the rangers who got together and brought us in there to investigate. When they'd seen me coming along with my dad, they said there's no way they're taking me in there. But Dad had to convince them that without me, he could not do this for them effectively because there were things I could do that I could not. Sorry? Did I read that correctly? He could do this for them at effectively because there were things I could do that I could not. Until you read the emails of the elders translating those journals that didn't make a lot of sense to me. The U.S. military used Native American Indians are their best trackers and trainers in Vietnam. Dad was using me in that same capacity, but in other ways as well. I was trained as a child to do things that the government wanted me to do, that they couldn't do. But they also were making us, sorry, but they also were making use of Native American talents, which were, how shall I put it, part of my DNA, I suppose. The government meant to separate we Native children from the adults, to kill the Indian in us to save the child. It was the motto of the early residential schools. It was carried on after that through forced adoption of Native children like me. But as they found out, it didn't take 
There was something to us and in us that could not be removed through re-education. So if you can't beat an enemy, you join them or use them. The government of the United States has a very long history of doing things with the Native American Indian children, and for very good reason. Not all of us, but some of us, have abilities that other races don't appear to possess in the United States. You work with the population you have. Native aren't good for building railroads, for instance, but they are expert trackers, and the best when it comes to covert warfare or spying. Just as the elders revealed, we Native American Indians have a lot more to us, which has fascinated this government where I live, and that in Canada for a very long time. It's why you found out about the pit of dead bodies belonging to American Indian children in Canada next to that research facility. It's why the ruler up there told everyone that it's okay because it was all done legally. That was not done all that long ago for anyone to all dismiss it as a severe case of human rights violations. Did no one really question why they used and killed babies to children up to three years of age at that place? What could they have possibly been doing with them? And why were they only Native American Indian children and not that of other races? It's not like they are not enough disposable children of all races they can get their hands on. Now, isn't that true? Sure it is. There are specific things they're researching and developing with Native American Indians which fascinate them. I know in part what the lab did with me and other Native American Indian children. They certainly weaponized us. Why else teach martial arts to five and six year olds? Though it was hilarious to watch, I'm sure there was a big payoff for our government by investing all they did into that program alone for it to be worth their while. They don't th do things for no reason and they have to justify their bosses that the money's being spent or paying off. This government and the Canadian government have both been involved in using Native American Indian children in labs for many decades. For R&D and their projects are usually only about how to build a better war machine. You do the math. Now the Sasquatch are particularly interested in encounters with Native American Indians as well, and very few happen with other races on this continent at least. I've not had the inclination to look into how much indigenous peoples they interact with on other continents or the rates for each race. That would be a very important piece of information to have overall. Here's the thing, Steve. Whether we be in a personal struggle with these Sasquatch through their invasion into our own lives to lose to those of our family, our livestock and pets, our land and buildings, to them watching schools, churches, and other places where they watch us, will one day be in a fight with one or more of them, and we're probably not going to win against them. It's time we began to learn from the past and how people who were on this continent dealt with them. The elders said they agree with the fact that it's time whites know what they know about them. Yet, they're still being very guarded in what information they're releasing to the public. It's the aspect of things Native American Indians can do, which could bring all hell raining down on all our heads as natives, which bothers us most. If people in these countries knew what we are capable of, they could start murdering us in great numbers again as if we were evil, and that's a great concern. We must protect our own. So, as far as I can tell, the tribes could be employing the power they have in the case of the missing and murdered Native women. But it's clear they have not employed that yet, or maybe not much yet. Let me tell you that even though you might not believe it, or want to believe it, there have been times when both governments have greatly benefited by the abilities and skills that Natives had that they themselves did not have. It's too bad that whites think they know everything and have to rule over everything when with an iron fist. When the crap really hits the fan though, You'll all come back and talk to us, and then you'll be ready to have your eyes and ears opened. I can warn you the same as you talked on one of your recent videos to warn people strongly about bears, for instance, and how they don't pay attention to you, but they believe they can handle anything just fine on their own and don't need you telling them what to do and shoving it down their throats. I can commiserate with you on that account. Some people are just so full of themselves that they don't care what someone who knows the truth is telling them to save their lives. 
Remember that guy who was sitting in lawn chairs right next to bears, filming them up close? And they ate him and his girlfriend? We all knew it was going to happen because he wanted to show how close he could get and how close everyone could get to them and not be harmed. All it takes is one time and you're gone. I've come to know you and your little family and even some of your friends through your videos. We've seen some and most we have not yet. But you're a part of your community and you're working within it when it comes to animals, people, and Sasquatch. Most won't do it, but you are and for a reason. Someone has to do it. But most don't know or don't care they're around where all of you are. But even you don't know how much danger you and your family are in right now. They can and do come into people's houses and they don't have to break anything to get in. You will not see them, but you will feel them in there. Your daughter most likely will be the one to see them in the house and outside more than you or your wife. They love doing that to children, knowing most parents won't believe them. I truly believe they like messing with kids' heads and ultimately terrifying them, if not taking them. I was taken by them as a child and even into my adult years from my home and then returned. You won't always be able to tell other than she might say she had a really bad nightmare, which was very unusual and entailed giant hairy humans. How will you protect her then? Will you have, well, you have to clue into the fact they've been in your house and you believe that it's secure and they can't possibly do anything, do that without you knowing. I'm here to tell you as a childhood victim of this myself, that the one who took me for around five weeks from my home did so with technology. Blow that off though and laugh it off. Okay, I'm telling you the truth. Mom and Dad laughed when I told them how he was getting me out of the house after Dad nailed the windows shut with long nails, put deadbolts on both doors with chains, and he still removed me from my home. They could not ignore that there was no damage to my room at all, and they found me on the front lawn every night at 2 a.m. There's no denying that he was taking me from the house, and there was no evidence to show how it did it. So they asked me to explain how that happened. They target kids on purpose because they know we can't stop them. Well, not until my family made me hide in the middle of the house and I couldn't go outside or near the windows for any reason. After a while, the Sasquatch just gave up and not before he nearly shoved our house over. It was creaking and snapping when he leaned on it. A native friend of mine who was a chief, who is a chief, shared with me that you don't say out loud the name of any of these beings more than one time. Maybe refer to them by initials. When you say their name three times, it causes them to target you and not leave you alone. Why is this so? I don't know, but that's, I don't know, but that it's supernatural or not normal. I can say your name three times, but that will make you stalk me or seek to take what you want from me, lol. These Sasquatch are not people, even if the tribes call them that. They look like people, but they are not. They have abilities that some of us natives have for sure, which is probably why they're so interested in some of us. You and your property and family are merely resources to them. They are focused on you. They sit in the woods and watch you film yourself even. They throw rocks towards you, always mindful not to hit you. I've been hit by pea gravel by them in the woods when they had me surrounded and I could not see them. Rocks don't get thrown from tall skinny trees with no bottom limbs. They don't get thrown with such force to go over 25 feet away either and hit me perfectly in the temple of my head or even on my forehead. They've got great aim. I think they have a code not to harm us unless they do. When they do, it's like that guy who said they found him at two locations lately and menaced him until he moved in with others. But I'm telling you, they get used to you being with others and start in on them too. We experienced that in our aunt and uncle's house. Dad pulled us away from there for months after that to see if they'd follow us home or what they'd do. He sensed great danger to us if we continued to go down there. Now that you have this information, do with it as you say what you will. Your blood at least will not be in my hands. The blood of all others isn't on my hands either since I've spent years trying to get people up to speed on what's going on with these Sasquatch. Now it's out of my hands. 
I've done my job as a decent human being, and I've paid my dues at the hands of mockers and bullies with this subject, and far longer than most have been at it. I pushed them to take things into account which most would not have anything to do with as woo-woo, meaning made-up fantasy. We've come a long way, but there are still groups in which you can't talk about those things or you get banned from their groups. You read people's emails and let it be heard, like it or not. This is all I have for you today. I do hope that you share it with the world since this is critical info for everyone to hear, not just for your family. But if it does not get read, then I suppose it wasn't meant to be by God or for whatever reason he's got. You can't possibly be reading all the emails that have been sent to you. That's just a reality. But one day I hope to find a few of, I hope you find a few of mine and realize before I'm dead and gone that I'm a resource for information you've been seeking and not finding. Find me too late and you'll regret it? No, because I'm sending you everything I recall when I recall it. I know how important it is. I also know that as slow as men are, sorry, I also know that as slow as men are at getting to things and the way they do things is not efficient or practical. You all don't read instructions or take instruction a lot of the time. <laughs> Guilty. Hey, I grew up with three brothers and a dad and uncles and grandpas and I know what I know about your gender. Women are planners, calculators, and we have to be because we are the first and sometimes only line of defense of our children. Sorry, but it is what it is. You're all out there doing your own thing and we're left to protect the children and make sure everyone is cared for. You bring home the bacon. Patty Rowe, Lancaster, Ohio. I can't argue with those last paragraphs, Patty. <laughs> Guilty across the board, in a way. There you go. That was a bit of a long one this morning, wasn't it, you guys? But very informative. And uh, you're gonna do the, you're gonna do with that as you do, right? Take from what you will or leave it. And I will. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I'll find all of your emails, Patty. And I will make sure that I put some attention to them and share them either this way or maybe on the, uh, maybe I'll put them on the website, maybe possibly, all right? And I uh, appreciate you sharing with us. And I hope you share more. I, I'm going to I'm gonna have to uh, do a search for your name, find every single email, and, uh, and uh, see what we've missed to date. And like you said, there's so... There's so many emails. So many emails. If it's not a bad thing, I'm not complaining. We need every single person to share, right? Keep sharing while we can. Because, uh, I don't know, I just got a funny feeling that we, we aren't going to be able to do this that long. I don't know why. I just got a funny gut feeling something's up. I've had it for a little while now, but it seems to be getting a little more intense. And I don't know, when I, I make every single one of my decisions with my gut. Period. I can have uh, 50,000 people screaming at me different things they know and see and want to warn of, but in the end, it's up to this right here, inside. Each one of us. Not just me, but for me, I've definitely come to, the, I, I have definitely come to accept that fact that deep down inside myself, and I hope I hope everybody learns this soon for themselves, that we already know the answers, all right? Meaning, we already know the answers of what to accept, what to pay attention to, and what to do. But we have to override this, this barrage of bullshit that has been pummeled into us since the first day we left our mothers to go to school. We have been pummeled with a big, confusing tornado of bullshit, and it has really done a number on us right? And it's pretty tough to frickin' argue with that. If you have a quick glance at what has been going down in society just the past few years. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's insanity. It can be described as absolute insanity, but it's true. Anyway, babble. But, I appreciate you, Patty. Please, please email more information. Anything you think can help, I'll share it. For sure. Until I can't anymore. Well, I don't know how long that took. I haven't a clue. 
didn't seem like too long to me because I just got it me glued. I could keep reading that email for days. We'll see. Maybe I'll get a couple more shares in, but uh, he's got the wheels turning, right, you guys? Who are you going to listen to? Who are you, who, who are you going to listen to with all this information piling in from all these different directions? You should listen to your inside. Listen to your inner voice. That is the number one. That's the number one source you need to listen to. Anyway, give me a minute here.